Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show. Today is Monday, October the 1st, 2018. In this video, I'm going to give you guys a look at the English Town Swap Meet. This event occurs every fall at about this time of year. It usually runs for three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Usually, myself and two friends will rent a truck and we'll go down the first day on Friday to look at everything and try and get some good deals. However, this year it rained Friday and it was cold and nasty, so we had to go down on Saturday instead because it was going to be sunny. So I'm going to show you the flea market, or swap meet as I may say. I'm going to explain basically the premise, how it works. So yeah, let's get started. The English Town Swap Meet is mainly an automotive swap meet, mainly parts for cars, trucks, motorcycles, but there's also a lot of what I would call automobilia as well. If you're savvy, you can really score some really good deals. Now there are two types of flea market sellers. Number one is the professional seller. These are people who go from flea market to flea market, most often pulling a trailer, sometimes an 18-wheeler. These people are professional sellers and they know prices on everything and they actually charge at least 10% over going value. These are the people you want to avoid. I'm not talking about the person in the picture here, I'm just talking about in general. Now, as I stated, there are two types of sellers. The other type would be your regular ham and egger, guys like you and me who have amassed a collection of things and want to make a deal. Or people who own junkyards, things like that, who are hoping to wholesale a lot of their inventory. Now, earlier I talked about automobilia. Take a look at this Bridgestone sign here. Signs like this, illuminated signs, are highly collectible. The older the better and condition is very important. Now here you can see this Bridgestone sign is in excellent condition. So my friend was interested in it. He searched quickly on his phone and he realized that these signs usually bring approximately $350. Now given that information you would expect the person to be selling the sign for anywhere from maybe $100 to $250. Therefore, you could buy it, flip it, and make a profit. This person here is one of those professional sellers that I spoke of earlier. Do you want to know how much he wanted for that sign? $550. That is $200 above the maximum value that they're going for. And some of these professional sellers will not move an inch on their price. Unbelievable. As you can see, there's a very eclectic group of items for sale. Quite a few people had these gumball machines for sale. These things are still highly collectible, as are soda machines and things like that. Now, English Town is basically divided into two sections, for those of you who have never been there. There's a large field, or parking lot as I should say, divided by a drag strip and then a second field. It is basically known that the first section, the first lot, has your professional sellers who tend to charge more. Then you cross over the drag strip and then you have your ham and eggers. Normally you can get a better deal with your ham and eggers, but not always. There's a lot of highly unusual things to be found. I had to take a picture of this. This guy has a huge display of nuts and bolts. A dollar for a cup. You take his blue cup there, you scoop out as many as it will hold, and you pay him one dollar. You can find just about anything automotive related at this wonderful swap meet. Here are old door handles, or window handles rather, for cars. I see a lot of GMs in this picture, but he had all different types. 
these things usually range from anywhere from one dollar maybe to five dollars each depending on the situation and your seller now the English town flea market where I'm at here is not the biggest venue by no means the granddaddy of them all is the one in Carlisle that one is really really far from where I live it's over four hours each way and it would actually entail getting a hotel room and staying several days it can be very pricey a lot of really nice survivor cars are driven to the swap meet here is a Ford F-150 from the 90s it is really really clean as you can see there were an awful lot of Ford truck parts available in the swap meet I saw one guy who had a set of oversized wheels and tires for a Ford truck he was trying to get twelve hundred dollars for them it so happens that a customer walked up while I was browsing there and was interested in them and the seller said to the customer if you come back later today with cash I will give them to you for one thousand dollars whether or not the guy ever came back I don't know there are a lot of collector cars that they trailer in to try and sell here you can see a Ford that was brought in on a trailer and the owner is hoping to sell it there was quite a few really really rusted out hulks that were for sale as well here you can see people browsing looking at the various sellers and what they have the way it works is you'll walk up to a table like this and you'll see something you might be interested in and you'll say to the man behind the counter excuse me sir how much are you asking for this now many times there's a price on the item already let's say forty dollars but you ask him anyway because many times he'll start off with a cheaper price he may say thirty dollars or whatever and the idea is to act like you're really not that interested but you want to throw him a price anyway so what I'll say to him respectfully of course is oh man I really didn't think it was going to be that high I really can't afford to go that much because my friends and I just got here and I don't have that much cash and I need to save it for people on the other side where I know I'll get some good deals would you take twenty dollars right now we can make a quick deal if you'll take twenty bucks depending upon the seller he may well take the twenty dollars then and there I did really really good this time by making low offers like that now as you can see in the picture this man here is wheeling one of those granny carts and loading it up you should see some of the improvised things that people had there I myself had a 64 gallon big heavy-duty plastic garbage can on wheels that I was rolling around and filling up and periodically we would make trip back excuse me we would make trips back to our truck offload come back and reload again the most impressive cart that I saw was a shopping cart an actual shopping cart from a store that somebody had taken off the original hard rubber wheels and replaced them with large oversized wheels the kind they sell in Home Depot on rubber tires that guy was really using his brains I give him credit for that as I said it was a nice day and a lot of people turned up Saturday seems to be the best day to go because Friday a lot of people have to work and can't go and a lot of sellers don't even show up on Friday they come Saturday knowing that the people will be off and they will come wanting to get some good deals a lot of sellers leave Sunday they don't even stay for the event for the last day because they just want to get going they made their money on Saturday and they're taking off right here is just past the halfway point that white wall you're looking at is the drag strip I talked about so we have already taken care of the first large parking lot crossed over the drag strip and now we're on the second part where there's a lot of ham and eggers you would be surprised how many people came up to me and said things like I know you you were here last year the reason I remember you is because you had that big garbage can on wheels 
I didn't take a picture of my garbage can, but it's very, very similar to this blue one right here, this recycle container. Very similar to that. It becomes quite heavy when filled with a lot of merchandise, but I find it the best way and the most economical way. I took a picture of this Jeep because it was just plain neat. This was for sale, but I did not see the owner. There's another shot of the Jeep. A lot of people have just such an array of odds and ends that they would fill a U-Haul, bring it, and just dump it on the table like you're looking at right now. There was this one guy in particular, he had buckets and buckets of things that were so cool, I was digging through them with both hands. I'm telling you guys, there are some salesmen here that are the nicest people in the world. I picked out two, handful, two hands full of doodads, and he charged me only $5. Conversely, there was one of the professional sellers on the other end that had a 1963 Chevy Corvette spinner, a single piece. The spinner had a lot of patina and pitting on it. I mean, it was not in good condition. I didn't even make an offer on it because I was afraid the guy would accept it. In my opinion, it was worth five or ten dollars to me. Then I could turn around and flip it maybe for twenty or twenty-five. So my friend said, "Sir, how much is this?" The guy said, two hundred dollars. I almost fainted dead away. Now, there were a lot of people buying tires. I saw one salesman that had two full-size 53-foot trailers filled with brand new tires. I don't know what he was charging, but he was intending to make a lot of money. A lot of people were selling what I call takeoffs. Tires and wheels from their factory truck. All the tires and wheels were mainly from trucks. So let's say maybe a late model Ford F-250 with a nice set of chrome wheels, center caps, and original tires. The guy would sell them because he put those gaudy aftermarket rims on his truck. But if you're looking for a good set of nice factory Ford truck rims and tires, this is the place to go. Again, here's another look at the event. And you can see it attracts people of all ages. This was a Chevy truck that was in the parking lot. It was one of the attendees. And I just took it, I took this picture because it's a survivor. And I love seeing survivors. He has Pennsylvania license plates on there. Vanity plates, no doubt. And I thought that was just plain cool. There's another shot of the truck, a side view. And there it is again. So guys, that basically brings this video to the conclusion. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the English Town swap meet, or any automotive swap meets, drop them in the comment section below. If you happen to know of any good automotive swap meets on the East Coast, would you please also drop that in the description, in the comment box below, because I really need to go to more of these things. I would really love to go to the one in Carlisle, but it's so darn far from where I live. I live just outside of New York City, and that would be over four hours each way, plus hotel rooms. I mean, and I'd have to rent even a bigger truck than the one we had this time. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on the English Town Swap Meet. Thank you for watching. Please leave your comments, questions, and concerns. Remember, I'm crazy New York driver and you're not. Rock on and peace!